In this video, we are revising basic life support with some questions and answers. The first question is about a construction worker who has fallen from a roof. Now somebody has gone to the patient and done a quick survey of airway, breathing and circulation. We have been given the findings. Airway is intact but there are facial wounds, absent breathing and finally the carotid pulse is palpable. The question is, which of the following is the best next step? Five steps are given. You can pause the video here, try to figure out the answer by yourself and then when you are ready, you can continue the video. Of course, the question is asking the best next step. We have to remember the steps of basic life support. We can remember it easily with the mnemonic doctors ABC. D is for danger. If there are any danger factors at the scene, we don't go near it. Now the question hasn't given that there are any danger factors, so I'm not going to consider much about it. But R stands for responsiveness. If the patient is responsive, we are not offering him CPR. But if he's unresponsive, then certainly we might need to offer him CPR based on the results of ABC survey. But the question clearly indicates that the patient is unresponsive. Now S stands for shouting. We need to shout for help because of course we can't use CPR for more than two to three minutes without getting exhausted. The airway is patent, but we all know that in all unconscious patients, the tongue is going to fall back and obstruct the airway. And that is why in all unconscious patients, we must do the triple maneuver. Triple maneuver consists of chin lift, head tilt and jaw thrust. If the patient is not breathing, then we have to give rescue breaths. Finally, the circulation. The heart is working fine. We know that because the carotid pulse is detectable. The first statement, starting mouth to mouth breaths at a rate of 12 breaths per minute. Now this statement is correct. The patient is not breathing. We have to offer rescue breaths. The correct rate is 12 breaths per minute when you are not giving simultaneous chest compression. The first answer is correct. The second statement, starting chest compressions at a rate of 100 compressions per minute. Now this is wrong because the patient's heart is working fine. The third stem is also wrong because it says that we need to give chest compressions and rescue breaths at the same time. No, the heart is working fine, so we don't have to give chest compressions. Fourth stem is performing chin lift, head tilt and jaw thrust. Now this is a wrong answer because the patient has fallen from a roof and he has facial wounds. So we have to suspect neck injuries. When we suspect neck injuries, we are not going to perform chin lift and head tilt. Why? Because the fragmented vertebrae can pierce through the spinal cord and make the patient permanently paralyzed. Now the final answer, shouting for help. Of course you need to shout for help. Now there are two correct answers. Now which is the best next step? Ideally we should shout before we start the assessment of ABC. Therefore I think at first he should shout for help and then start mouth to mouth breaths. But if you were under the impression that he has already shouted for help, then the first answer would also be correct. The second question is about an 83 years old gentleman who has collapsed onto the ground following a chest pain. And now he doesn't show any signs of responsiveness. Now these are the findings of the quick survey of ABC systems. An intact airway, absent breathing, absent carotid pulse. The question is, which of the following is the best next step. Now there are five steps again. You can pause the video here, try to figure out the answer. When you are ready, you can continue the video. Right, this is a classical case of cardiac arrest. Now let's analyze the question. He has an intact airway, but he is unresponsive. We know that in all unresponsive patients, we should secure the airway. Now how can we secure it? Usually by triple maneuver, but if we suspect, neck trauma, then we only give the jaw thrust. Now he doesn't show any signs of breathing, then of course we have to give rescue breaths and he has no carotid pulse, which means his heart is not pumping, therefore we should give chest compressions. The first answer, giving chest compressions and rescue breaths at the same time. Now he's not breathing, he's in need of rescue breaths and he doesn't have a carotid pulse, we should, we should give chest compressions. So the first answer is correct. We should give chest compressions 
and rescue breaths at the same time. Now, usually, we do chest compressions at a rate of 100 beats per minute. 100 beats per minute, right? When you give rescue breaths alone, we give at a rate of 12 breaths per minute. But when we combine it with chest compressions, for every 30 compressions, we give two rescue breaths. Second answer, turning over the patient to see if there are injuries to the neck. Now, this is wrong. Now, if there are injuries to the neck, by turning over him, you are causing him more harm. Therefore, always avoid that. Fourth answer, performing triple maneuver. Now, there's no doubt that we need to secure this person's airway. But we have to look for any signs of neck trauma in the history or in examination. But we find none in this case. Therefore, it is completely safe to do the triple maneuver for three steps. They are the chin lift, head tilt and jaw thrust. Fifth answer, finding out if he is a do not resuscitate patient or not. This is completely wrong. Unless you are informed, you are always performing the basic life support. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you haven't watched my previous video about basic life support, the link is given here. Another case series regarding basic life support is coming up next week. Please subscribe. Share the video among friends if you found this useful.